Hello, welcome to Progressive Farming Company's How To Series on Managed Grazing Systems. I'm Emily, I'm the Sales Manager here at Progressive Farming, and I'm joined by James, who's the Director. Hi, Emily, thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. So in the series today, we are going to cover everything you need to know about designing your own grazing system. So who is Progressive Farming? Progressive Farming, we are a UK business, an online UK business, supplying electric fencing equipment, mobile watering equipment for livestock, plus energizers and tools. We are the UK stockist for KiwiTech. We also stock Hayes, Pell and Speedrite. You can find everything we stock and do on our website, www.progressivefarming.co.uk. There we list the whole range, including helpful how-to videos, all of our pricing, and you can buy direct on the website through our online shop. So I'm going to hand over to James now, who's going to talk through what we cover in this grazing series. Yeah, thanks, Emily. So this series is a five part series, and we're going to cover everything you need to know about how to design your own managed grazing system. That's going to include the benefits of managed grazing, design of the system, electric fencing, energizers, and earthing and water systems. So we look forward to sharing our knowledge with you and we really hope you can join us and, and you also enjoy working your way through this five part series. Welcome to Progressive Farming Company's How To Series. This is part five, water systems for livestock. So already in this series, we've covered the benefits of managed grazing, grazing system design, electric fencing, both permanent and temporary, Energizers and earthing, and now in this part, we'll look at water systems for grazing livestock within managed grazing systems. This part has quite a lot of content to cover, so if you're short on time, looking for something particular, or jumping back in, here's a short table of contents with the key topics and the times at which they start in this video. So water is, of course, a fundamental component for um, of a grazing system. Uh, milk is 90% water. Uh, meat or, or animals are about 80% water, as, as are us humans. So uh, it's a reliable supply of clean water to the paddock, to where the animals need it, is really, really important. It's quite often water that's the first limiting factor of grazing management or access to water or insufficient water. Uh, which is the first limiting factor to grazing management and yeah if you if you're interested in, in, in grazing management or managed grazing systems then go out and check part one to uh, to learn more about the benefits that, that can bring to the business um if you've seen that already then then let's let's get into it so when it comes to thinking about water the first part or first thing we should think about is how much do we need and that's something called water demand and what we can do to calculate water demand or to estimate water demand um, is we can use the weight of the animal to estimate their demand in terms of litres per day. So you see on the left hand side that for a lactating animal, so whether that's cows or sheep, the total demand in litres per day per animal is 15% of the body weight, of their body weight. For non-lactating animals, so like growing cattle, uh, you know, dry ewes or lambs, wean lambs, then the total demand is in litres per day is 12% of their body weight. So that's the demand. So if we have 100 sheep and they weigh 60 kilos um, and they've all got lambs at foot, then we do 60 kilos times 15% times 100, we get the litres per day. If they are lactating, the litres per day using the 15%, that will include their offspring. So if it's a ewe and she's got a pair of lambs, then the water consumption of the lambs, and there will be some water consumption, certainly once the lambs are post six weeks of age, but their water consumption is within that 15%. Uh, same with the cow, she's got a calf, um, or milking herself, or being milked herself, and that 15% will cover the calf, um, up until probably the calf is around 200 days of age. And when we're calculating these figures, the 15 and 12%, that's calculating probably a maximal demand. So it's, if you like, worst case scenario, but if we're designing a system, we are always designing for that worst case scenario. 
you know, we need to supply an adequate amount of water. We've got to design our system for the hotter or hottest day that we might experience in the year. So demand's the first part. The second part, which is interesting for the system design, is the flow rate. So the flow rate is how much water does, do we need to be delivered to the trough or delivered into the system to sort to satisfy the animal's demand. And within that, we've got a couple of options. With our grazing systems, because we like being flexible and we like being low cost and efficient, we might be using a mobile trough that moves with the group versus a fixed trough which stays in place. These mobile troughs, because they're being moved and being tipped out and moved again, tend to be low volume. So therefore, because they're low volume, we need a slightly higher flow rate to that trough. So there'll always be an animal drinking and there'll always be someone there you know, looking for looking for water when the uh, temperatures are high. So with a low volume trough, once we find the total demand, we say it's consumed over a seven hour period. We use that seven hour period to get our flow rate. If we're using fixed vo fixed troughs, so they, they stay in place and they like to have a higher volume. So we normally assume that total demand is consumed over a nine hour period in that case. So let's have a look at an example. So let's, for example, say we want to use a mobile trough. We have 100 cattle, they're not lactating, 300 kilos average weight. We'd start working at the total weight of the group. So 100 animals times 300 kilos equals 30,000 kilos. We then times that by the relevant, relevant percentage. So because they're not lactating, it's 12%. 12% 12 times 30,000 kilos equals 3,600 litres per day. To use that, or to use a mobile trough, we divide the number of litres by seven hours, then again by 60, and that gives us eight and a half litres per minute as our flow rate. And that's our target flow rate to the trough. So if this was a setup or scenario where we have a maybe permanent trough in the corner of a field, and what we'd like to do is split the field into paddocks and then run a length of water pipe on the surface, connect to a mobile trough and move the mobile trough with the cattle, we would then go to our permanent trough in the field or to wherever the water supply was, and measure the flow rate there. We measure the flow rate simply by timing how long it takes that supply to fill a 10 litre bucket or other calibrated container. If the flow rate at that permanent trough or supply to the field is let's say nine or 10 litres a minute, then there's a pretty good chance that we'll get our eight and a half litres a minute we need to the trough. If the flow rate's lower than we need, then we need to think about reducing the number of animals or some method to boost the flow rate, or maybe even using a permanent trough rather than a mobile trough. Because you can't always use our mobile troughs where we've got poor flow rates that we can't, um, can't improve. So there's always a solution for water. We just need to make sure, you know, certainly to make sure that we are supplying the necessary liters per day and the necessary flow rate to use the trough system or water system we wish. We wish. A final point around mobile troughs is that for a, the mobile trough to, for this calculation to work effectively, the animals must be within, you know, sort of two and a half hectares or 400 metres of the water trough. What this means is on a hot day, they're fairly close to the water trough. So the animals drink together, or sorry, the animals drink as ones or twos, rather than together as a herd. So it's not 100 cattle coming to drink, it's one or two animals coming to drink all the time rather than a big visit with the whole herd, it's one or two animals all the time because they're fairly close to the trough and there's not a big event. And that's a key difference to, to some setups. A really useful table. Um, again, a copy of this is available on the Progressive Farming website, so um, or Progressive Farming Company website, so check it out there. Um, if you need to see it slightly larger, number of animals down the left-hand side, and then the stock classes along the top and their sort of states whether they're lactating or dry, and it gives you the required flow rate in litres per minute for that group of animals. So we see here if we have um, maybe 100 ewes and they're lactating, then you need 2.7 litres a minute to supply a, a portable or mobile trough. Same information expressed slightly differently. Here's a graph. The blue line is for lactating animals. The orange is dry. The weight of the animal is along the bottom and then the required flow rate in litres per minute is on the left-hand axis. Again, information is available from Progressive Farming Company. Um, so if you knew your average animal weight, you could read up to find the required flow rate in litres per minute and then times by the number of animals. So either, either option works well um, 
And um, yeah, the important thing is making sure there's enough water available uh, for the animal into the trough. So we think about the various options for supplying water. Uh, a water browser is, is perhaps one of the first options that springs to mind, particularly where water is maybe not available. Um, the downside of limit with a water browser is that if you've got larger groups, you need a lot of water. So there's a lot of, sort of labor involved in that solution. Um, don't normally recommend it um, unless it's for those sort of for small size setups um, or very temporary grazing. You know, when the, the, the land is only grazed once or twice a year. Um, you see there what a thousand litre provides on a hot day. A thousand litres are only, only just enough for 100 ewes and their lambs or 28 head of cattle, about 300 kilos, or 11 cows and their calves, if the cows are 600 kilos. It's not a lot of animals for a lot of days. Um, so just need to be aware of, um, of the limits limit, limits in supply or to size the bowser accordingly uh, where the groups are larger. It's also always handy to have two bowsers or two containers, so one's always full always filling. Um, mains water, you're know, very lucky in, in the UK to have access to quite a few mains water options. Um, flow rate is a key one to check. Um, quite often the pipe coming into the property or into the block of land is small and we oh, at best 25 at worst 20 mil diameter. Um, so the flow rate needs to be checked um, in every field and also ask the question around if it is reliable. Quite often find in the east of the country it's good most of the year. Then when people start watering their gardens in the summer, the flow rate drops. And of course, that's exactly when or where you wanted the flow rate to be good. So it's a bit of a negative. So flow rate and reliability. The other part with mains is that um, you know, be aware of what legal requirements there are for using a mains water supply, particularly when it comes to livestock water. And you'll find that most authorities or all authorities will need you to ensure there's an air gap between the inlet and the full level on your troughs. It means that products like the Kiwi Tech water troughs are not compatible because they're bottom fill, as would all bottom fill troughs uh, not be compatible in that, um, in that scenario. So if you've got a main supply, it doesn't mean you need to be connected to it directly. What you can use it for is you can use it to fill a tank, storage tank, and then to gravity supply the rest of the farm if you've got the right setup in terms of elevation relative to where the land is. So not suitable for all circumstances, but for a lot of the southwest, for a lot of Wales, there's a nice bit of elevation. Uh, so this can work fairly well. Mains water comes in at the top, fills a tank, and then it flows through the pipes to gravity feed the rest of the system. And that gets you away from you know, being, being able to use, that allows you to use you know, sort of like a Kiwi Tech mobile trough, which is bottom fill with a mains water supply because that storage tank will have the ball valve in, it will have the air gap that's needed in that system. Equally, you might be using a private water supply to fill the tank and then be gravity fed from there. Nice thing with gravity fed, there's no moving parts. Uh, once the water goes in the tank, you can quite often have one or two or even three days worth of storage. So you've got a bit of peace of mind. Um, and the tank, storage tank, is a nice way of buffering out a fluctuating flow. So you might have a great flow rate at night, pour during the day, fill up the tank over 24 hours, and it provides the buffer, the storage, to supply the daytime demand. Animals are only drinking during the day. So um, if you can fill up a tank at night, it provides the buffer you need. Solar pumps, solar pumps are actually really exciting. There's one in the image, top right hand side of that slide, um, produced by two or three manufacturers uh, from the UK or Ireland at the moment. A lot of product available off the shelf. They will pump from a open source, so like a river or pond, or even now from a well or borehole. Um, will pump from there and supply a really good distance. So they're both you know, the capacity and specification of those products that are available off the shelf has really improved in the last couple of years. They're sort of standalone units run completely from solar and they'll supply a really good amount of water up to 15,000 litres quite often um, and sometimes up to 50 or even 80 metres ahead. So they've transformed the grazing on a lot of farms now, particularly on rented blocks where capital investment wasn't um, wasn't perhaps permitted. So yeah, something to look at and something to have a search for and see if you can find a solution to fit your, your need. The other option is of course the electric pump, which needs a mains power supply, but we have unlimited capacity. So if you're dairy farming with more than 150 cows, very, very likely you'll be using an electric pump or need to use an electric pump. Uh, a lot of cattle farms, or cattle farmers are also finding they're sw having to switch to electric pumps um, because the stock numbers are increasing, they're running larger groups, 
larger groups means more liters per minute needed to the trough. Um, and it's always a toss up. You can have more liters per minute with a larger pump, need a smaller trough. So the cost savings in the trough, but a bit more money spent on the pump and pipes. So it's just one to weigh up. Um, so with the pump, then we were thinking about pipe size. Um, and pipe size is really key. You know, we, we need the right flow rate. If we have the right flow rate, we can use smaller, more mobile troughs, save money there. Um, but we can't really skimp on pipe size. So rule of thumb, 25 mil for sheep, 25 or 32 mil for cattle, um, being sort of dry stock, um, R1s, R2s, dairy heifers, growing cattle. Um, if it's a larger system, larger farm or animals, you probably are also looking, particularly with dairy, looking at 50 and 63 mil. Um, the area of the pipe is the key. The larger the area, then the lower the resistance, the greater the flow. That's why moving from 20 mil to 25 mil, even though there's only a five mil difference in diameter, it's something like 40 to 50% more area, more cross-sectional diameter to put water through. So you get a much better flow rate for the same pressure. And we've talked about the lower trough size. If you've got the required flow rate, you can use a smaller trough. So sheep, uh, 50 to 100 litres, and that water up to maybe 200 ewes in their lambs. And then with cattle, two litres to 200 litres. If you think two litres sounds quite small, then yeah, we'll show you the Kiwitech micro trough product, which is pretty phenomenal um, as a way to water sort of groups of cattle up to 50 head per trough. If the flow rate's too low, you just have to use a larger trough and use the capacity in the trough as the buffer, as a reserve. And if it's a larger trough, you're probably not going to move it, probably going to leave it in place. So as well as the choice of trough, it's also worth, worth thinking about if we've got this mobile trough scenario, then you know how do we connect our trough? I mean, after we've moved it somewhere else, how are we going to connect it? And we have a product from KiwiTech, which is their quick release hydrant. It's a very simply designed and extremely robust bit of kit that allows you to plug into a live water supply. So you can plug in and connect your trough under pressure. It doesn't require any special tools. The fittings on the lower sides of the T are a push fit, and it's designed for 25 mil pipe as, as standard. So you can have a, a length of trough connected to your pipe, 25 mil, and a length of pipe running on ground carrying water with these hydrants spaced every couple hundred meters, you can drag a trough over and then just using 25 mil pipe on the end of the trough, plug it into the top of the T, you push it in, small turn to the right and pull it back, it locks and water starts to flow into the trough. When it comes to release it, you empty the trough, push the pipe into the hydrant again, small turn to the left and pull back and the hydrant releases the pipe, water flow stops and you can move the trough to the next hydrant. So it's this idea we have one trough per group not one trough per paddock or, or per field. So in terms of troughs that are specifically designed for rotational grazing or any form of managed grazing, then the QTEC range is probably some of the best. First option is a drag trough. This is suitable for sheep or cattle. It's really, really tough um, and designed to be tipped out and designed to be towed. So the chamfer on the bottom gives a little bit of an angle, so when that's full of water, it'll hold about 100 litres, obviously weighs just over 100 kilos, but really, really easy to tip it out. Simply any, anyone can do it from the age of five or six upwards. Um, it was designed originally to be used with, with bulls being taken through the finish on, on a grass-based system, so it is effectively bullproof. Um, where this one was used originally was under the fence line with two groups of 25 to 30 bulls operating off both sides of it. It's got sufficient space so that two or three cattle or five or six sheep can drink at once, meaning that as long as you have a sufficient flow rate, whatever you calculate that to be for your group, it's perfectly possible to use this trough with up to 100 head of cattle, as long as you've got the flow rate to match or 100 head of dairy cows, for instance. Uh, the valve in it is 40 litres a minute, so it's a really high flow valve. All the components are simple and very robust, and all the components can be replaced individually. So the float itself, the valve itself, or the fitting itself can be replaced individually. Nice feature, it won't leak on slopes up to probably about 10, 12 degrees, um, as long as you place it to the valve or the float, sorry, is facing downhill. Underneath the trough is a sort of a bit of a tunnel that allows the pipe to come in and out, and the a piece of cord or rope can be wrapped around the neck of the valve and then used to tow the trough when the trough is empty. 
and that trough will tow that it tow can be towed with up to 200 meters of water pipe attached as well and the fitting underneath the trough is strong enough to take that so it becomes a very flexible option for moving around the farm and particularly on rented units where you don't want to put too much commitment to permanent infrastructure have this trough and move it around with the stock and say in water maybe up to 100 cows or 400 ewes per trough dry use per trough if you've got the flow rate so yeah, a couple of pictures of it in situ you can see in one example there it's being moved around these paddocks and in the other example it's been set up to supply two groups or in that setup um, it's perfectly possible to move it less often because it can be used or cattle can drink from it both sides of the fence so quite often leave it under the fence once animals are used to using it used to the fencing putting it under the fence and making sure the wire heights are suitable so your animals can drink without risk of getting a shock can be a really effective way of um, yeah, not moving the trough as often. So that's particularly relevant when it comes to the micro troughs. The micro trough is a yeah, fantastic little product. It's far more economical, so it's basically far cheaper than the drag trough. However, it's only suitable for use with cattle and needs to be used with wean calves or bigger. So really 100 kilo animals or larger, and it's cattle only. The reason it's cattle only, the reason it's larger animals or 100 kilos or more, is that it operates like a pressure plate. So the animal, when it goes to drink, pushes on the plate with their nose, and then the, that plate pushes against the valve. The valve opens against the water pressure. Water flows into the trough, and so they can drink. And with a little bit of practice, really just takes a day, they get very, very used to using it. Again, it's the same high flow, flow valve that sits in the drag trough. So it's also, we also do 40 liters a minute with about four bar behind it. But the trough itself is very, very small and it's got a ground spike on the bottom. So you take it around, push it in the ground. Um, it works really well being situated under a fence so the animals can access it but not potentially play with it. Um, fantastic on slopes because that ground spike holds it in place and it's so easy to move around because it weighs about two and a half kilos. Limited to probably about 50 cows or cattle per trough if you've got the flow rate, but it's possible to join two or more troughs together as a bit of a daisy chain. Again, if you've got the flow rate, so a group of 100 animals might be served by two micro troughs, for instance. There's some pictures of it being used in situ across a range of range of stock classes, and so it's a really, really effective tool for bringing mobile water. Um, a lot of guys using that on sort of brassicas and roots. Um, the low volume means that there's always water flowing through it. Um, it's been quite effective through some of the winter period um, for some people, um, and yeah, just a nice, easy device. 25 mil fitting as standard um, would be possible to adapt it if, if required. Um, it's also worth mentioning that the standard Kiwi Tech hydrant can be adapted to be used with 32 mil pipe with a pair of female um, adapters. And uh, yeah, contact Progressive Farming Company if you'd like some more information on how to, to use it in a 32 mil pipe system. So just perhaps worth touching on water system design. So that's the actual layout of the components in the system. So some of you may recognize these slides from part three, we looked at, uh, or part two, sorry, we looked at grazing system design. If you've not seen that part of the how-to series, then it'd be worthwhile going back and checking it out, certainly before planning your water system. But in this situation, we've got a series of eight paddocks created with a mix of temporary and permanent fencing. We've maybe got, um, you know, a buried water pipe and two permanent troughs. So that's kind of, you know, sort of maybe where people's mind jumps to when they think about a water system for a paddock grazing setup. The other option, of course, is to not do that, not to bury the pipe, not to have the permanent troughs and all the cost that goes with that setup, but to have what to have instead is water pipe laid on the ground, on the surface, so above the ground, and then a quick release T hydrant. So that's got two open ends, so it looks and works like a normal T. You put in your supply pipe in both ends, and then the top side is available to plug in to fit the trough. And then at the other end, a quick release end of line hydrant. So that's a hydrant which the one end is capped off. So you put it on the end of the pipe, it provides a quick release fitting, and then the flow doesn't go anywhere else, so it's, so it's capped off. So it's one component to finish the end of the pipe and provide a T piece. So you've got two hydrants and a mobile trough. So obviously that trough can go round and be moved from paddock to paddock. It can be unplugged, moved up to the other, to the T hydrant and plugged in there and serve those paddocks. And that might be it. it may just be those fields. 
or it can then be moved to another field with the group and perform a similar function there. The alternative option is maybe where the system is really quite flexible. So rather than these fixed paddocks, we've got a number of temporary fences and it's kind of a three fence system where the animals are grazing between two fences and then there's a safety break ahead. So there's a break ahead. And in this situation, there's a couple of T hydrants and one end of line hydrant in the pipeline. That pipe is on the surface underneath the, the sort of semi, semi permanent or temporary electric fence. And that group's going to move with the animals. So the trough's going to be dragged and placed under the fence. It's going to be available for the animals to drink from both sides. So if the animals are moved every two days, the trough's moved every four days. And when the trough's moved, it's either moved over um, you're in, and pulled away from the hydrant. And then eventually it's unplugged and plugged into the next hydrant in the series um, and carries on from there. So you know, it's an extremely flexible system, um, very low cost at the same time, a little bit of labour, but very flexible so it can cope with changing conditions and you know, it doesn't require much kit to set up. So there are some, some perhaps more sort of more real life examples. So this is a field split in 16 paddocks um, with a mixture of sort of permanent and semi-permanent fencing. Four hydrants were installed. You can see in that image there. And then a micro trough was moved with the animals and uh, that's a 12 acre field. Um, and that carried about 45 cattle right through the grazing season, and they you know, very comfortably used that uh, micro trough to supply them all year. And then larger setups gives you an idea for me how the teas are positioned to supply a number of paddocks, whether these are permanent or temporary, and a little bit of thought around the route of that pipe, um, and a bit of a check around what diameter pipe to use to make sure you get the litres liters a minute required for that setup. So that's the end of the how to guide around water systems. So any, any questions, welcome to get in touch with the rest of the farming company. The numbers are all there. If you haven't already, then please go back and check out the other parts of the series. Uh, part one, benefits of managed grazing. Two, grazing system design. Three, electric fencing, including posts and wire. Uh, four, energizers and earthing. And this has been five water systems. I hope you enjoyed it.